Genesis chapter 23. So uh, this chapter is dealing with the passing of Sarah, Sarah's death. And uh, so let's just begin reading at verse number one of that chapter, read a little bit. Sarah lived 127 years. These were the years of the life of Sarah. So Sarah died in Kerjath Abba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and weep for her. Then Abraham stood up from his dead and spoke to the sons of Heth, saying, and I'm going to stop right there, uh, concerning the fact that, I just want to talk for a few minutes, concerning the fact that all of us, from time to time, are going to have to deal with someone passing away, some death happening uh, in, in our relationships. That's all there is to it. That's the way life is. We, from the day you're born, you, you start the dying process. You're going to die. Every one of us is born. It's inevitable. All of us are going to go by death unless Jesus comes, uh, which is great. But uh, regardless of that, you know, we need to realize that these, these bodies are temporary regardless. Either way, they're temporary. If Jesus comes, our body's still temporary because we're going to have a glorified body then. So the problem sometimes is that there's a real danger in over-grieving. Uh, and, and then because of that, if you're not careful, we enter into the temptation of worry, of fear, of, of all these things that come along with the fact that someone is gone. And several of y'all have lost people recently. But I, I was looking at this last verse that says, Then Abraham stood up from before his dead. And there must come a time that we continue, that we stand up. Must come a time that we stand up. The enemy wants us to stay in the past, wants us to become overwhelmed with the sadness of the past. And it is inevitable that we grieve. Grief is good. You're supposed to go through grief. That's, that's a normal process of life. But to stay there, and not go on, not come to a point of standing up is also very dangerous for us. And I, read, I read something that I thought was so good. It says, it says, weeping must not hinder sowing. Weeping must not hinder sowing. If we continue to grieve and weep for too long of an extended time, we become unproductive. We're not planting any seed. We're not reaping any harvest because we're stuck in the mourning situation. Like I said, it's okay to mourn. I'm not, I'm not belittling people who mourn. We, it should be a process that we go through. And the, the dearer that person is to us, you know, when, when we've been married to somebody for 55 years or, or so, it, it's, it's, a, it's a real whammy to go through their loss. And you don't just get up the next day and say, oh well, because your life is transformed and changed and it's a difficult road to walk through. I know that it's difficult to walk through. But I do know there has to come a time that we need to understand that God has left us here for a reason. When, when someone that we love passes away, we should always remind ourselves that when they, when they are leaving, that we are going to. We're going to, all of us. You know, some people, uh, I, it was like Benny and Janelle, you know, Benny uh, passed away. And within just a few weeks, Janelle passed away. And it happens that way sometimes. But whether it's just a few weeks or it's a year or two or years, we're still going there. We need to remind ourselves that death is not the end. You see, Abraham knew. He knew the covenants of God. And he knew that death was not permanent or it wasn't the end for a child of God. So he prepared a place for her. You know, uh, 2 Corinthians, this is a scripture that all of you need to remember if you have someone who's gone. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 8, or if you ever go through that feeling like, oh, well, I don't know. I don't know about life or death or I don't know what's going to happen to people after they die. This scripture to me is one of the greatest ones you can stand on. 2 Corinthians 5 and 8 says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Paul said to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Some people want you to believe that 
you know, you just lay in the grave. They believe in soul sleep. You just sleep, and, and, and sometime later you're going to come up. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that when we are absent from the body, and what another place Paul said, that is far better. To be absent from the body, he says, for me to go home and be with the Lord, Paul said that's far better. Well, if, if we were just going to the grave and be in the dark and sleep there, that's not far better. So Paul's far better meant that in a moment you leave this body, your soul and your spirit are immediately in the presence of God. And then when you are, when the resurrection takes place one of these days, those people that you put in the grave last year or a few months ago, those people, their body is waiting for the resurrection. And one of these days when the trumpet sounds, the Bible says, we who are awake are not going to hinder those who are asleep. It's speaking of those who are dead. We're not going to hinder the ones who are asleep. Because in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, it says that the dead shall rise first. Sarah's coming up out of that grave that, that Abraham put her in. And your loved one is coming, my mom and daddy are in a grave. They're coming up out of that grave in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, and then when they come up out of the grave, we are all, who are believers, still alive on the earth, are going to be caught away with them to meet the Lord in the air. That's what the scripture says. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, it's true, I'm sure, honey, come on up. Um, it, it, I'm, uh, Pastor believes that some people might be walking around. That's fine. But the point that I'm trying to make to you is when someone leaves this planet, you should have the confidence to know that you're, gonna, you're going to be with them again. Now, of course, we're not talking about the same kind of relationship, marriage and family and an individual home. We're going to be in a whole different body, but we are going to know them as we know. We're going to know who they are. They're going to know who we are. And we are going to be with those who, who have gone on before us throughout eternity. Let, let me just remind you of something, go back just a little, and I'm not going to explain all this, but when she said, Paul said, it's far better, you know, it's better, it's not worse, it's like I said, not just laying in an old hole and going to rot with, with the Lord, be out in his body, present with the Lord. What happened to the thief on the cross? You know, when the thief said, when you enter into thou, thou kingdom, remember me, Lord, and you know what Jesus said? Today, thy soul will be in me in paradise. You remember the beggar and Lazarus, uh, the, the, the Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom, you know, okay, and I won't get into all that, but I'm just saying, and then that, that man, though, that, that lived, the rich man was there, had five other brothers, he was tormented in the flames then, so when he died, he, he went exactly where he was going to go, and then Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom, he was in comfort. And the Lord, of course, was moving around and then doing everything. And then on the cross, he said, Today thy soul will be in paradise. And Jesus was in paradise then with him. And so now, uh, praise God, something else happened after the resurrection. But now when we die, it's to be present with the Lord. And I just want to emphasize that. Okay, thank you. All right, now the next verse here, verse number four, says, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And the children of Heth answered Abraham, saying unto him, Hear us, my Lord, thou art a mighty prince among us, and the choice and the, in the choice of our sepulchres bury thy dead. None of us shall withhold from thee his sepulchre that thou mayest bury thy dead. And I want to make a point here before we get through tonight, and that is. Abraham saw himself as a, as a stranger and a sojourner. Do you hear what he said? He said, I'm a stranger and a sojourner with you. That, that's who Abraham saw himself to be. Guess who the Canaanites saw Abraham to be? You know what they saw him? They said, thou art a mighty prince among us. Thou art a mighty prince among us. I'm going to tell you, if the enemy... Now, I don't think necessarily the enemy was, was uh, causing Abraham to think this way, but this stood out so strong to me. We need to understand that we are a selected out people on this planet. We are not the run-of-the-mill sojourner and, 
and wanderer about. We are chosen of God. See, the thing that made Abraham a prince and a mighty man was because God chose him. He was chosen of God. He was anointed of God right where he was. Even though he wasn't in the land where God had told him to go, God didn't depart from Abraham and say, well, I'm not going to mess with you because you're not where I want you to be at this moment. But you know what? God's presence is with him. God anointed him. And God allowed those people that were there in that land to see who God saw Abraham to be. Most of the time, I think, we need to understand, and I, I've always believed that if people truly knew how important and how much God loves us, it would change the way we feel. That never makes you proud. When you understand how much God loves you and how important you are to God, the fact that God chose you. The Bible says you never chose God, He chose you. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says He chose you. How amazing that is. So therefore, if we have responded to his call and have become his child, we should walk around, not with prideful attitude, as I said before, because guess what? It's all about him. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be anything. But we should walk around feeling like we are truly a prince or a, a mighty person on this earth. I, like I said, not because of pride, but because of our position in God. We don't have to become a, a, a lower class citizen just because another people might think or you might think. You know, sometimes we are harder on ourselves than, we, than other people are. We're quick to uh, condemn ourselves and to feel like we're nobody. But if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and He is the King of your life, you have dwelling in you the King of kings and the Lord of lords through the presence of the Holy Spirit. And everywhere you go, you take his presence. Everywhere you go, you take his presence. And you have the opportunity to be the example, to be the representative of Jesus Christ on this planet. We are ambassadors in the kingdom of God, anointed and chosen. You know, when you when you go in another foreign in a foreign country and you're an ambassador from the United States of America to another country, you are never truly a part of that country, but you are special in that country. You have a special position. You walk with a special authority. You know whose authority you walk in. You walk under the authority of the United States of America. That's how you walk around in Greece or, or in Israel or in Saudi Arabia. I don't care where you are. If you are an ambassador for America, you walk around with the authority of America. Our armed forces, our, our government, you walk around in that authority. Everywhere you go. And so we are ambassadors on this planet. And everywhere we go, we should understand that we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ on this planet. And we should be quick to carry that understanding in our spirit and walk around with that confidence in who we are in Christ. God cannot use Somebody who's all beaten down, thinking, oh, I'm just dirt all the time. God can't use that. God uses people who can hold their head up and understand that I have been chosen of God to be exactly where I am at this exact time. Because where we are is where the Holy Spirit dwells. When we walk in a store, we walk in carrying Jesus Christ with us. Wouldn't that make you feel differently if you could get that pers perspective in your spirit? Make you feel differently walking into some place instead of walking in? You know, we should never go anywhere feeling like we got to tuck our head and feel like we're not as good as other people. We should never do that. Because we have been transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit and we walk under the anointing and the refreshing power of Almighty God wherever we go. You know, people poured out of the woodwork to come see Jesus. Do you know that? I mean, everywhere Jesus went, there was a crowd. People 
hollering out to him and running after him everywhere he went. And if we wear him well, and if we wear him under the anointing of his spirit and lift him up, I guarantee you, we'll make a difference wherever we go. So think about that verse, number four, five. Read it again this week and remind yourself of who you are in this life, in this planet, in this place. Okay? Remind yourself who you are in this place.